This is Debunk TV. Bob Coon sitting here, the one and only CK, Carl Kirby to my left. What's going on? I am a blessed man, and I you am super excited about this topic. Because it's probably the most important one we're going to ever do. Because yes, it's about it salvation. It's about your eternity. It's our whole reason for being here as Christians, we quite really, frankly. Yeah, we really want to lead people to, to, the, to the Lord every way that we know how within, Absolutely. within the confines of what Scripture teaches. But let's uh, let's go to the streets. Yeah. Let's go let's to our makeup team. On. We told them to go out there and ask people, what is salvation? How do you get to heaven? Those types of things. Absolutely. As always, interesting answers. Here we, here go. we go. The first speeding ticket in the entire world was issued... In 1902. Wow, Becca, I had no idea. What an interesting fact. So Aaron Rodgers recently said that, um, basically that if God was a loving God, that uh, he wouldn't send people to hell. Uh, do you agree with that? Yes and no. He would send people to hell. Why, why do you think that's the case? Why do you think he would do that? I don't really know. Do you know the term, um, like being saved in the biblical sense? Like, do you know what that means or how would you word what that means? Being saved meaning you accept God as your savior. If there is a heaven, how would you think one would get there? I think by doing the right thing, helping others, but also by living their own path and just having fun. I haven't really much thought about it much, but uh, I just feel that uh, after this, there's another life beyond this, and we'll go to the pearly gates and move on from there. Look, that's a tough line of questioning you got here, Luke. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, generally, uh, I don't know, I probably kind of think that, um, you know, we live our best lives, and there might not really be a heaven, but, um, you know, maybe... Uh, I don't think it's quite like that. No. A variety of answers, <laughs> yeah. as always. Uh, you would expect a variety of answers yeah. and feelings and those types of things. But the reason why we do debunk is to get quick answers to those yes. people. So, And everyone that we usually play these to after the subject, they're like, never heard it that way. Exactly. We did exactly. a video. It's debunk number seven that you can find on r4h.com or getdebunked.org or .com. All our videos are there. They're always free. This is debunk number seven. It's debunking the myth that I can earn my salvation. Watch it. How you doing? That's good. Now let's get right to the point because there's a lot to unpack. In Matthew 7, 21 through 23, I paraphrase for brevity. Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Many will say to me, did we not prophesy in your name or cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? Then Jesus will say, depart from me. I never knew you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a second here. Seems pretty harsh. I mean, where's the happy-go-lucky, cheek-turning, white conservative lamb holding everybody's okay genie in a bottle Jesus we slap on our greeting cards on Christmas and Easter? What in the world is going on here? Why does he say depart from me when they did all these amazing things in his name? And why won't everyone who says, Lord, Lord, enter the kingdom of heaven? Well, the answer is found in that question, my friends, wrapped up in a riddle, spun as a metaphor, and delivered here today forthwith at breakneck speed. Lots of people think that salvation depends on their good deeds outweighing their bad deeds. Like for some reason, God will overlook the 1,001 bad things you did if for some reason and somehow you did 1,002 good things. A lot of other people know they haven't done enough good things, so they think if they simply say a prayer, walk down an aisle when emotional music is playing, and say four hallelujahs after they do a bad thing, then, well, hey, God will like them a little more for their religious behavior, forget about all their sins, and open the pearly gates. Well, both of these views, which are really the same view, is exactly what's being addressed in our Matt 7 passages. Look at it. These people that called to Jesus said, did we not prophesy? Did we not cast out demons? Did we not do mighty works? We, 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 all the way home. You see that? The pronoun is wrong, baby. And Jesus is letting them know that. He's saying there ain't no we when it comes to salvation from the wrath of God. There's only I. I am the bread of life. I am the door. I am the resurrection of life. I am the way, the truth, the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. According to Romans 1.16, the gospel is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Salvation from what? Well, from the wrath of God, from spending eternity in a place called hell, which I get nobody likes to talk about these days, but hey, we got to say it like it is, friendo. And belief is not just a mental affirmation of the facts. No, 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 no. It's placing your complete trust in the person and finished work of Jesus. That means salvation has nothing to do with our righteousness, because according to Romans 3.10, none is righteous, no, not one. And in case that isn't clear enough, Isaiah 64, 6 says, all our righteous deeds are like filthy rags. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works. Well, okay, let's hammer this home. In Luke 18, two men went into the temple to pray, and one said, I'm glad I'm not like those sinners who do worse things than me. I mean, I do all kinds of good things that people see, like smiling and saying pious things and praying. I go to church, I even give money and tithe, I even fast. All in all, I'm a pretty good guy, right? The other guy wouldn't even lift up his eyes. He beat on his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. 
Jesus said, it's that guy, the chess beater who went away justified. Then a rich dude comes up to Jesus and asks, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Notice the pronoun. After some chit chat, the rich man walked away sad because he realized he couldn't earn, buy, or achieve eternal life his way. People then ask Jesus, well, who can be saved then? To which Jesus replies, well, there's nothing anybody can do to inherit eternal life. It's impossible. Salvation is only possible if God does something. And what God did is send his only begotten son into the world so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So let me ask you, are you the first dude in the temple, the rich man who walks away sad, the religious dude who present all the great things that they've done? Or do you agree with God that you are a sinner in need of a savior who cries out for mercy and puts your trust in the saving work of Jesus? Time to do some serious soteriological soul searching, seeking scripture sufficient solution, I'd say. Because this idea that we can do good things to gain God's grace or inherit eternal life by our own merit, or that our salvation is earned by walking down an aisle or any other way, has been debunked. Adios. People around the world actually believe in the afterlife. 90% oh, yeah. of them or something oh, yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. But how they get there, and exactly. the way they get there, it's they're always it always has to do with, you always hear it's something to do with them. It gets very emotional, too, yeah. when you start talking with people about this. Expect, uh, when you bring it up, expect some anger and animosity. Yeah. But, you know, again... You're telling me I'm not good. Exactly. How can you look at me? How are you judging me? When yeah. we keep our hearts pure, and it's like when... And we're going to get into that, yeah. so I, I don't want to yeah, jump ahead of ourselves. Just, yeah, yeah. yeah, we jump in. But, yeah. okay, well, I mean, let's just start with the basics. Yeah. I mean, go for it. you got some stuff on, the, like, what is salvation? You know, who needs to be saved? Let's go through this step by step and, and, and kind of even That's and, the best and way. out of our ordinary steps, our way we do it, kind of even slow it down a little bit. Yeah, this yeah, stuff yeah. Is, this well, is key. Salvation is, you know, at its core, just the basic, it just means to be spared or rescued from something undesirable. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's a simple thing. Everybody knows that. When you have been saved, yeah. salvation, you have been Pulled Protected out of something. From it's something. like imagine you're drowning, yes. and someone reaches down, pulls, pulls you, you out. out. Exactly. It's like, oh, someone saved you. You needed saving. You were drowning. Exactly. So, yeah, something exactly. along those lines. And use any metaphor that you want. You, you know, exactly. a fire and right, guys pulling you out. But uh, so th- that's what it is. We're being pu- pulled pulled from something. We're being rescued. I right. love that word. Jesus is a great rescuer, right? Yeah. And now we're going to say, okay, so what are what are we saved from then? Well, and I would also say, yeah. who needs it? And that's everybody. Well, yeah. We want to make that sure. statement. I mean, it's going to be reinforced well, with all the verses that yeah, we're going through. You can't do it yourself. But you, we, want yeah. to, we want to lay that out right from the very beginning, is that every one of us needs this, because Romans 3.23 is so clear yeah. that it's, you know, we, we've all sinned. sinned. Yeah. I've yeah. sinned. Trust me. I know that yeah. better than most. But, you know, what do we say from? We said it in the, in the debunked. Yeah. Hell, yeah. nobody wants to talk about that. Nobody <laughs> wants to acknowledge that. They sure and, don't. And, it comes and, I, and I can kind of get it. Oh, well, I like, don't like I, it. I, I, nobody likes it. I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't like the fact that I've got loved ones yeah. that, that have rejected and that because they have rejected, there is a place that has been prepared for those that don't want to be with God. Yeah. And I think that's the key, too, that, I, that, that has always hit me is that, well, why would a loving God send me to hell? Yeah. Whoa, 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 yeah. man, you got to get back into Scripture. He has, as we're going to go yep. through that, he's given you an opportunity. You're Absolutely. saying, no, I don't want it. So guess what? If you don't want it, I won't force you to be with me. He has prepared a place. Yeah. It's real. And it's not as if once you get there, you're going to go, oh, now I love God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's still going to be the same kind of you know resistant attitude against exactly. the only way that God's provided, and you're rejecting not only him, but you're breaking his laws, so there's an unrighteous part yeah. to it. But, but that, uh, you know, hell... No matter what iteration you think of it, if you're a conditionalist, if you're an annihilationist, if you're in eternal damnation, this is not a good place. No this matter how you look at the, yeah. at the all the idioms that God says, if it's literal that there's weeping and gnashing of teeth, or if that's a metaphor, still not good. You don't want to be. You there. don't want to be there, and there's that's what better place. that's what you're being saved from. But yeah. where, what are we being saved to? And that's that better place we're talking yeah. about, and we're praising God that there is a place that He has prepared for yeah. us as well. For those that want to be with him, and that's called heaven. And yep. the this afterlife, sounds so the good basic, afterlife. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> and quite frankly, it is basic, but sometimes we need to get back to the basics because when you have that bib- yep. biblically illiterate culture, heaven, hell, you know, well, heaven's a great place where I get to hang out and party with my friends. No, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. there yeah. is that place that God has prepared for us. It is a beautiful place. No more tears, no more sorrow. I mean, I, no more suffering. Yeah. Think of those yeah, things. No more I mean, conflict. And, exactly. and when you work, it all works together. No more weeds, no more cursed ground, no more flesh pulling against you. Absolutely. No more world tempting you, no, no more devil tempting you. No it's more like, sore knees and yeah. hips in the morning when you're <laughs> exactly. trying to get up. I'm exactly. looking forward to no that. No more LASIK <laughs> surgery needed. I, oh, I can't <laughs> see anything. 
Yep. It's your it's God restoring Eden, really. Exactly. And, and it's like this a is a restoration how, of what it was yeah. like in the beginning. And think about it, what, what did God give us in the beginning? He gave us perfection yeah. at the end of creation. It wasn't just good anymore, it's very good, it's perfection. Yeah. And so to be able to be restored back to that, I mean one of the things I love to to think through is that God creates a new heaven and a new earth. Yes. It's not we're gonna float on harps and be spiritual. No, no, no. We're resurrected bodies back on earth, restored with all the right waterfalls and the animals not destroying each other and the fruits being what they're supposed yeah. to be and friends being no one betrays right, you. Right, like right, can right. you imagine this bliss? I never have to worry if my kid's gonna get run over or trafficked or you know, I ah, I, I, I think of this, this is the thing that really hits me. I live in Kentucky, but I'm blessed right now to be here in, Kentu- in, in uh, California. California. And this in, morning, an undiscl- in an undisclosed place, because yes, we don't want the, bomb threats. Yeah. And this morning I got to walk down, and 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 uh, my buddy Dan and I were out here, uh, and we're looking at the, the ocean. It's beautiful, and, and yep. I get to go to Hawaii every couple, three years, sure. and the beauty that's there. When you look at the beauty that we see in the world around us that's still here... Yeah. And it's fallen, and it's written. It's ridden, suffering and it's, from the curse. And it's still gorgeous. And can't you imagine... Yeah. I can't. I, no, Honestly, you can't. I well, can't. no heart can conceive, no mind can conceive, no ear can understand, no, no mind so can So this is what God wants to bring us to, and he wants to keep you from the exact yeah. opposite of that. So that, But uh, make mo- no mistake, you know, the best thing and the worst thing mm-hmm. about these things yeah. is one of the best things about salvation is it's for eternity. But and so is that separation. So is the whatever that whatever that, that hell separation, is, man. I mean, yeah. that separation from God. And we would not be doing people a, 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 a true service. We would not truly love you if we said to you, "Oh, you know, it's okay. God's going to kind Do of wink at want. that." Yeah. We have to speak the truth, and the truth is, there is a heaven, there is a hell, yeah. and it's for eternal, uh, for eternity. So, and the, make to, sure you're on the right spot. To the extent you believe that is to the to the extent I think you evangelize. Oh yeah. Because if there's none of that, well, like I would just go. I don't kind of do what you want, but it'd be nice to live a good life, love God. But right. when you think of eternity, and I really believe that, it should it should kind of motivate me to step up and go. As much as I'm uncomfortable, like, I want to try to do something. Here. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'll tell you the thing that that really hits me with with on that as well is when you recognize who you truly are. We talked about that Romans yeah. three twenty three. We've yeah. all sinned. When you truly come face to face with the fact that you know who you are and what you really are apart from God. Yeah. That was the motivating factor with me. It's like, so now when I go out and talk to people, it's not because I'm so much better or I have something that, you know, that there's some knowledge to yeah. impart. Yeah, it's no, like, dude, it, I am a fellow pilgrim on the journey of life, and yeah. we are here to go out and offer true hope. Yeah. I mean, John 3 16 is the verse. That's the go to yeah. verse. I mean, you think about it. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Yeah. And abundant life. I mean, that's that's another verse that yeah. always gets me. God doesn't just want us to have life. Right. He wants to, wants us to have an exceedingly abundant yeah. life. Here and even, but... Yes, nothing, nothing man. Like so, it, yeah. But it is for eternity. And so... Yeah. So this is the quintessential Christian verse that you see all over Absolutely. the place. It's on the cups Absolutely. of all the places. Under for the God's, eyes of the football. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, they really want you to get this thing. Absolutely. Because it is the overarching thing. And there's a lot of that that happens in Scripture. You have overarching verses... But then you have to dig down to get, like, to peel out what, what God's really saying. But this is it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. I mean, that's Jesus. That whosoever believes in him, his son, should not perish but have everlasting life. Yes. That's the that's the overarching one. That's it. That's There's the another one, John uh, 4, 13 and 14. Walk through this one a little bit. Yeah, this John is... 4 says this. Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. There's only one way. That's right. You want to never thirst again, then That's the only right. way is, is, is through It doesn't Christ. matter what I think, what I feel, what yeah. I want, what I hope. You're right. When he lays down the laws and he made everything, he has it right yeah. to do that. So. Yeah. So then who who's saved? Well, that's the thing. I mean, let's we just have to jump straight into scripture because yeah. it doesn't matter what I think or right. anybody thinks. It matters what God said on that topic. Yeah. In the in the video, we cover who's who's not, and and the trick about thinking it's us, right? Yeah. And, and that is the Matthew seven twenty. This, exactly. This is, this is again. This is the me, scariest verse in the Bible. Scariest verse in the Bible. I'm gonna be. I'm. Yeah. I'm right there with you. Because I th- I actually go through this as a filter for me all the time. Oh. I still wonder sometimes. If I if I'm saying what these guys said, didn't aren't I on the right line? Didn't I do the right thing? But this hey, is let's be honest, man. I think every one of us have a, a propensity to try to work our way yes. 
and to earn. It's because how we get everything else in life, right? It's a reward right now if I do something, you know, but God kind of turns from, it up from my down. upbringing, dude. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, my biggest problem would be that I am going to show you that I am worthy yeah. of this. I am going to work for this. Earn my father's love and get my brother's attention, right? It's nope. like, no, nope. I got it all. So God says. <laughs> so here's who doesn't. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my father who's in heaven. That's it. That's now, again, uh, this is a summation verse, an overarching verse. Right. What is the will of the father? Well, it's to place your trust in Christ, yes, right? And, exactly. And, yeah. And to repent and, and, and be saved. So then who saves us? I mean, if there's nothing nothing that we can do or say that merits the gifts of our salvation, where does it come from? I can tell you who doesn't save us, yeah. and that's us. That's us. We don't save, that's, <laughs> we don't save that's us. That's clear. <laughs> that, that's a biggie. Because there's it, nothing that we can do. It is totally yeah. by God's grace. Which we got to unpack. Because I, this is the most important thing for people to get. Yes. Right? But here yes. it is. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your doing. Right. It is the gift of God. I mean, straight, you cannot, not as a result of works. Right. right? Look at this. Not of your own doing, not a result of works. Yeah. There's no way you can claim that it's works. He just says it's not your own doing, it's not your works. We have nothing to do with yeah. this. This is totally by God. We reinforce it with John 1.12, okay? Mm -hmm. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, mm -hmm. who were born what? Not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man. Again, there's no works that you can do. And there's one more under, uh, underline that should go up there. He gave yep. the right. <laughs> right, exactly. See, I should have underlined thing. that. He yeah. gave the right. So, so pretty pretty clear, very again, clear. nothing you can we do can on do your it. own. We it has to be an extension of God's grace. Yep. And so now get into, like, you had a friend that would broke these down for you a little well, bit. Well, yeah, because, I mean, we, we hear about mercy and grace all the time, yep. and they can kind of be, what's the difference? And so I got a dear buddy, man, his name was Dr. Mark Jackson, and uh, he gave me this little simple thing. He said, Carl, grace and mercy, think about it like this. Grace is God giving us what we don't deserve, while mercy is God not giving us what we do deserve. So you don't deserve heaven, right? but God gives you that because of exactly. his love and his grace. That's right. You do deserve hell, but he's not going to give it to you if his grace is extended to you and his mercy set. Okay, so we're going to go into John 11, 25, 26 here to, to hit some of this home about the eternity of this thing. Yeah. And, and, and the question that Jesus asked here, Yes. is what we're going to get into. Yes, 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 yes. yes. We're, so we're about to jump into the how is someone saved. But yes. this is a verse that kind of sets it up. Walk us through this one. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. So there is life after yep. death. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. I mean, this is so powerful. And what a blessing it is. But the line that means the most right here is that last one. Do you believe this? And that's the question we have to ask is, do you believe this? You might be somebody that does believe this and you're sitting there going through these studies, which we pray are encouraging you and challenging yeah. you and equipping you to get out and to do something with it. But you might be somebody that's sitting there saying, this is a bunch of hooey, man. We're not going for any of this stuff. You're not getting a nickel out of me, you know, you <laughs> bunch of money grubbers. Look, there is a God. He loves you so much that he came and he died on a cross for you while you were rejecting him, while we were spitting on him. He loved us. And there is no love greater. There is no love that we can equate to on this planet with that. No father loved a child more than God loves us. No mother loved a child more. And those are powerful loves. Do you believe this? And, and we would challenge you. We would beg you to please consider it at least. Get in, check these things out. Go talk to some people, do some digging, and just find out for yourself, man, because this is the most important thing that we can give anybody. I love it when you jump into preacher mode. I'm sorry, it's dude. Like, it's, no, not, it's soapbox time, man. No, it's not. It's, it comes from your heart, and that's really good. But So, I mean, we know who saves us. We know what yes. we're saved from. We know what we're saved to. But here's the weird kind of question. How are we saved? What, what is the mechanism God does? And yeah. what, is there a part that we play? And there's a bunch of different camps here. We don't want to get into that. Yeah, but boy. we will tell you what Scripture says. Let's just go to what Scripture says. Then, I think that's all we can do. And then I think we can unpack it with a couple of metaphors. And but, at the sake of being too simplistic, yeah. okay, because it truly is much more. But at the sake of being too simplistic, we'll just do what we call the ABCs. Because uh, th that maybe will make it easier for people to hang on to yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and spread, you know. So the A is acknowledge that you're a sinner and need God's mercy. I mean, yeah. I don't know any Christian that 
uh, the, one of the most powerful moments in their life is when they exact uh, acknowledge that they're a sinner and they need a savior. Yeah, that is like that's the life change moment. Well, because I mean, well, like Romans here says, we all have sin and fall short. So we all to need not it. acknowledge it is to call God a liar, which is what First John says. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. These words are not in us. I mean, this. So the very first step is like you're saying. It's like let's be realistic with our sin nature and who we are before God. Because it goes back to that Luke passage yep. that we put in the video. There's two guys that came up. Right. And one right, guy right, said, right, right. hey, man, didn't I do these things? I'm a pious man. And then the other guy beat on his chest and he said, God, using your word again, be merciful on me. Don't Please don't give me what I deserve. Don't give me, yep. And he says what? A sinner. Yeah. And then who? what did Jesus say to him? That guy walked away That's justified, right. right? That's right. So I mean, we hear, for all have sinned, if you say there's no sin, you're a liar. And if you don't confess or admit your sin, yep. where's the mercy going to come from? So yep. that's the A, acknowledge that you're acknowledge. a sinner and that's, you need God's mercy. And acknowledge, grace. admit. I mean, there's all yeah. kind of A's that you can throw yeah. in there. Hold yourself accountable. Accept. Yeah, accept. accept responsibility, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, which in our culture is like this lost thing. I mean, oh, it's not my fault. It's because this person did this yeah, to me absolutely. or something yeah. happened in the past. Blame and Accept responsibility. Yeah. We are sinners. Yeah. And so... Uh, then that leads the, into the, the world. Brain. The world is screwed up because you screwed it up, and because I screwed Absolutely. it up. Most of the stuff Each that happens us. to me is because of the stuff I do to myself and Amen. cause. And Amen. let's just Amen. own that and be like this tax collector. Yes. And look at the Lord and go, "Have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. Uh, I, I don't have anything God, else." Here it is. He bowed his head. Beat it. I, I've got nothing That's else. All I got. Yep. 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 So the B is is what? What do we got here? Believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross and God rose him from the dead. Yeah. We don't serve a dead Savior. We serve a risen Savior. God, someone who in Hebrews tells us that he's experienced everything that we've experienced. Yep. He's gone through it. And so when we come to him, we approach him. It's not this, oh, well, I don't no. get, you know, I kind of. No, this he's, is someone who's experienced what we've experienced. It mediates between exactly. yeah. And we can come to him boldly, which yep. blows me out of the yep. water. When I know, when I once I've acknowledged who I am, yeah. I deserve to be on my face yes, before this holy like, God. Come bold, yeah, come boldly. Yeah, and, with confidence, he says. And he confidence. comes and he yeah. picks us up. He dusts us off. He puts us in new clothes yeah. and gives us new hearts and Amazing. new minds. We we can't do we can't deserve yeah. that. <laughs> so it's interesting though that he like we 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 get a lot of this stuff that I want to get into a little bit because Romans ten says because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in yeah. your heart that God raised him from the dead. You're going to notice a lot through the overarching thing about believe, and then you get deeper into it. There is a believe in and a believe that, mm. or a confess that. You have mm. to acknowledge certain facts sure. that are true. But if you don't believe them, which means to accept them in your heart, and the heart, it, you know, the Hebrew heart especially was was the seat of your will, mm. was the seat of your thinking, and is the seat of your beliefs, mm. right? It's like it is your worldview. Yeah. And Christ is saying you can't just make mental assents and go, well, he did die, he did that, and did that, and not live a certain way, or not actually believe in it. It's like the parachute thing, right? Yeah. Do you believe yeah. in a parachute? I'm, you know, you have the whole thing. You're on a plane, yeah. and the guy goes, "I like parachutes. I know how they work." And until you strap it on and jump out, yeah. you've not put your trust in that parachute yeah. or tested it out and put it. In. And you're gonna see. The, if you look at all these verses, it's always in, 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 mm -hmm. in. But when you confess or talk, it's that, that. That so you have to have facts and you have to accept them in their heart and place your trust in it because that's the believe in. It's got to be your core, man. Exactly. It's gotta, exactly. This is it. This, yeah. this is who I am and my core. So, yeah, yeah. So I, this part is the big like this is believe in your heart and and so then we got the C. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wrapping well, it up here and it ties right back yeah. into the verse. We're going to show yeah. that it's confess that Jesus is Lord and that. I, look, you can you can have head knowledge, you can act, you can live a great life, you can be a good person, all that stuff, but unless you confess Christ as your Lord, yeah, we're lost. Yep, same verse. There it is. Confess yep. with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. There's something about uh, because I think this comes from the Holy Spirit. I don't think it does. I mean, the First yeah. Corinthians twelve three. This is the whole point yeah. Yeah, to, yeah, toward yeah. the end of it. You know. Uh, well, let's say it. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says Jesus is accursed. He can't do it. Right. Right. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. Mm. I mean, this is a, to put it, to believe that in your heart. God draws you near, and the Holy Spirit puts it in your heart so that you can say this thing. It, again, it's not your own work. Right. They, they, they can do it. You and know, it, the, the, the scary thing to me, Bob, is that there are millions of people yep. who believe in a monotheistic God. Yep who are very nice and very polite and very kind, yep. but they're still going to end up separated from God because they haven't received him as Christ. Right. 
We said a lot. Yes. But we can summarize it in, in, in this we video. We want to give this we to you as well, man, because this is what, something we want to make available to folks mm -hmm. so that, look, you take these conversations, grow a little bit, dig deeper than what yeah. we've even gone. But now here's, to me, one of the best tools I think we can give to somebody to just start a conversation on this important topic. It's super fast, but if you study these verses That's and right. walk through it, it's gonna, it'll be good. You'll love it, I think. Buckle up, because this is the most important thing you'll ever hear, straight from the pages of the inerrant, infallible Word of God. The Bible teaches that God created everything, and He called His creation very good. He created man in His image. Then He made woman from the man, and man named her Eve. God gave them dominion over all creation, and He also gave them free choice. Man and woman were in perfect paradise, naked and unashamed, with only one restriction. They were commanded not to eat from a certain tree in a garden where God had placed them. God warned them that if they disobeyed Him, it would be sin, and death would follow. Now, being tempted by Satan through a serpent, Eve ate from the forbidden tree, then gave the fruit to the man, and he ate it too. Thus, mankind had sinned against God. Now a holy God must deal justly with sin, so he did. Because man had dominion over all God created, the entire universe was cursed, and we all now live in a corrupt and fallen world full of death, suffering, pain, evil, tears, and toil. The sin nature had entered reality, and since then we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and the consequences are terrifying. Dead in our trespasses, we are all doomed to eternal destruction, away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His might, and there's nothing you or I can do to save ourselves. That's fantastic news, isn't it? No, it's not. It's the worst news ever. But here's the good news. Here's the gospel. God loves us so much that he sent his one and only son to rescue us. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, fully God and fully man. Born of a virgin, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, which makes him uniquely qualified to pay for our sins and rescue us from God's wrath. Not only did he step down into humanity, but he was executed on a cross in our place. He was pierced for our sins and crushed for our rebellion. Upon him is our punishment, and by his wounds we are healed. Amazing love, amazing grace, but that's not all. Jesus, after being placed in a tomb for three days, resurrected, thus conquering the last enemy, death. So powerful is the work and name of Jesus that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. So wonderful is his mercy and grace that all who call upon his name, confess with their mouths, and believe in their hearts that he was raised from the dead shall be saved. And the one who Jesus saves is no longer condemned, but is completely set free and will dwell in the unimaginable new heavens and new earth with Jesus and his co-heirs forever. There will be no more pain, no more sin, no more suffering, no more death, no more evil, and no more tears or toil, for Christ himself will make all things new. This is the full gospel, and like I said, the most important thing you'll ever hear. That's it for this episode of Debunk TV. Adios. See ya.